Okay, welcome to the video on the nervous system. So this is topic B1D. Uh, again, make sure you take some notes, and if you have any questions, make sure to ask me on Monday evening when I see you. So we're going to be talking about the nervous system today. There are two main parts of the nervous system. There is the central nervous system, which often gets abbreviated to CNS, and that is made up of your brain and your spinal cord. The rest of your nervous system is your what's called your peripheral nervous system, just meaning the edges of your nervous system, really. Now, these are the nerves that take information from sense organs back to your central nervous system, then from your central nervous system to what we call your effectors. Effectors are often things like muscles. They are things that cause change. So let's start with your receptors, so this all makes a bit more sense. So your receptors are your sense organs, so the parts of your body where you can take in stimulus or information. So your skin is your biggest one, and the type of information it can take is information about pressure, temperature, and pain, and we'd kind of describe all of those as being touch stimuli. Your tongue, which can take in information about chemicals in food, and that's obviously taste, bit of a typo there. Um, then there's your nose, which can take in chemicals, uh, information about chemicals in the air, so that would be smell. Eyes, which take in light, so that obviously gives you sight. And your ears, which take in sound, which gives you your sense of hearing. Now your ears also are responsible for your sense of balance as well. There's bits of fluid that slosh around in there that tell you if you're upright or not. So those are your receptors. So your receptors then pass on the information they take in, and they do that by passing the information along nerve cells, which are also called neurons. Now in this diagram, I've shown you a sensory neuron. Now for the foundation level, you just need to be able to identify the parts of it. For the higher, you need to know what they do. So let's identify the parts to start with. So the first bit is the sheath. Now the sheath is this bit around the outside here. Um, it's not the bit on the middle, it's the globby bits, the fat bits around the outside. So we then have the cell body. This is the bit that acts a bit like a normal animal cell. Um, it's just where the nucleus is going to live. Um, it's sometimes stuck out to the side. Sometimes you find them in other places depending on what type of neuron it is. But you can always tell because it's where you've got the little nucleus circle. This bit here, this white bit here. Then we've got the receptor of the cell, which um, is often not on an end like this. Sometimes it's a circular glob, sometimes it looks a bit more like a tree. It depends, again, what type of cell it is, but it'll be on one end. Um, we then have the axon. Now, the axon is the pink bit in this diagram that runs right down the middle. So it's the bit inside the sheath. And at the end, we have the dendrites. So what do they do? Well, the axon is what carries the electrical impulse, so that's how your body uh, communicates, how your nerves work, sending electrical impulses, and they travel down the axon. Now, the sheath just insulates the axon from the rest of the body, so it stops you losing that electrical signal and it going other places. So it also allows the impulse to go faster as a result. The receptor is what detects the stimulus, that's pretty much all it does. The cell body, as I said, that's what controls the cell, it's particularly the nucleus in there that does the controlling. And then the dendrites are what connect one neuron to another. There is a gap between them, but um, I'll explain in a second how that works, so it's called synapses, the gap. But it's the dendrites that allow it to communicate to the other neuron. So there it is, the signal being travelled along. It's about the extent of my PowerPoint skills. I hope it was very exciting for you. Um, so you can imagine that being the electrical signal that gets travelled along. So a bit more about nerve cells. It's a slightly different diagram of one, but it still has all the same key points in it. You still have the axon and your sheath. Uh, dendrites are on the big end this time, but that doesn't matter. And again, we've got the nucleus in the middle here, which is the bit that does the controlling. So Neurons are specially adapted to their job. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say, this is for the higher bit, for the higher paper. The neurons are adapted by having their big branching endings because it allows them to pick up um, impulses over a large area. So you see how they're spread out over a big area. Um, they're also very long, which allows them to transfer their signals over a distance. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are gaps between neurons, and the gaps are called synapses. 
um, once the electrical signal gets to the end of the nerve, it uh, causes it to release a substance which then goes across the gap until it reaches the other neuron, which then causes the electrical signal to be transmitted through that one. So it's electrical signal down the neuron, reaches the end of the neuron, causes a chemical to be released which passes across the gap, which is called the synapse. And then the next neuron picks up the chemical and it causes an electrical signal to be sent down that neuron. And that's how the signal gets passed along. Okay, so this leads us to the idea of a reflex arc. So we need to follow where the signal goes and what it causes to happen. So a reflex arc starts with a stimulus. So in this instance, it's a finger touching the hot pan. So obviously the stimulus will be pain. Uh, this is then detected by the receptor, which is a sensory neuron. An impulse is then sent along that sensory neuron until it gets to a relay neuron. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but this is supposed to be uh, part of the spine. So this is, uh, uh, imagine a slice cut through your spinal column. So inside here is where we find a relay neuron, which has just got the job of passing on the impulse. So the relay neuron then passes that signal to a motor neuron, which carries it to a muscle here, which is your effector. So remember, effector causes change, which causes the response, which is the arm to move. Uh, it's just missing the word response off there, so which makes the arm move, which is a response. So that is a reflex arc. So just to summarise it, we have a stimulus. Uh, it's detected by a receptor which passes a signal along the sensory neuron, which takes it to the CNS, or a relay neuron, either is fine for that. That then sends it down a motor neuron, which sends it to an effector, which causes the response. So that is the reflex arc. So as you can see, none of that actually takes it directly to your brain. It just goes to your spinal cord and back again, and that's all we need to react quickly to things. So the next part of the nervous system we need to talk about is how the eyes work. So, the, with the eyes, we're interested in how they work with light. So, the light is refracted by the cornea, which is the front of your eye just here, and the lens, which is this bit here. Now, by refracted, I just mean that they change the direction that the light is travelling. So, it just makes them come to a focus where we want them to. Now, the retina is the back of your eye, and this is the bit where we uh, can detect the light. The only point where we have a little blind spot is right here, and this is where the optical nerve joins the back of the retina. Um, little fact for the higher folks, uh, that doesn't come on the, up on the foundation though. So your blind spot is just where the optical nerve joins. Now the eye, um, in order to focus on things, it does something called accommodation. Um, and it does that by changing the shape of the lens here. The way it does that is there are muscles on the top and the bottom called ciliary muscles and they stretch or squash the lens that causes it to change where the light gets focused to. So knowing the word accommodation is for foundation, being able to explain that it's the ciliary muscles is for the higher paper. Okay, I hope that's clear. Right then, the last thing we need to talk about are problems with vision. So the first one we need to know about is red-green colour blindness. And this is just caused by having a lack of specific colour detectors. And it is a genetic disorder, um, much more prevalent in men than women. Now, for someone who is colour blind, uh, they wouldn't be able to see the number in the middle of this image. So unfortunately, if you can't see the number in the middle of this image, you might be colour blind although I would imagine most of you would know by this point in your life. Um, it's just simply that their, um, their eye can't tell the difference. They'll just look the same. So the other types of vision problem we need to be aware of are long and short sight. And this is simply caused by the eyeball being a slightly different shape. So the, eye, the lens focuses the light, but it's not quite in the right place for where the back of the retina is. So for short sight, the eyeball is too long. For the higher folks, you need to know this is fixed by using a concave lens. And for long sight, the eyeball is too short, and that's fixed by using a convex lens. Okay, so that's it for the nervous system. Uh, the key things you need to just work on is make sure that you know the parts of the nerve, uh, the neuron, I mean, 
and get your head around the reflex arc because they do like to ask you to fill in the steps in the reflex arc. Okay, so remember if you've got any questions, make sure to ask me when you see me on Monday.